Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It's April 11th, 2023. It's a beautiful Tuesday here in Baltimore. And we have a follow-up from an interview that we had last Thursday uh, with Dr. Daniel Carlsberg. Uh, in that interview, we broke down uh, longevity. Uh, we talked about how artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, and really the future of healthcare is going to upend an enormous industry. Today, I'm going to continue that, but I'm going to jump into some stocks that I think are leading the cutting edge of what's going to have to happen with artificial intelligence, drug discovery, and the future of healthcare. Coming up right now on Making Money. Most investors never touch this segment of the market, but according to the latest analysis from our team at Stansberry Research, this is the number one most important sector to pay attention to in 2023. And we're urging you to move your money immediately. You can stay one step ahead of the market to potentially unlock extraordinary gains just by understanding why this sector is set to boom. I strongly encourage you to read our analysis totally free today. It's all spelled out in a free report we just put together. Get the facts yourself. Go to hiddensector2023.com to get your free copy of this report. You can learn how to profit from the untapped potential in this hidden sector before it becomes widely known. Again, that's hiddensector2023.com for a free copy of our new report. Once again, thanks for joining me. This is Matt McCall, and it is the 11th of April, 2023. And boy, oh boy, time flies. And I, every time I hear like middle of April, I think of one thing, and it's not positive. I hate to say that, but tax time. It means I have to get my taxes in and pay the damn government again. It's inevitable every year. Well, maybe we can come up with some stock ideas today that can help you pay the government next year. And hopefully you're getting money back and not paying them. But in the, in the uh, situation you have to pay them, let's try and make some money. So as I mentioned in the open, uh, we spoke with Dr. Daniel Carlsberg uh, on Thursday's show. Happens to be my personal doctor. I'm happy to have him on. And uh, we uh, really kind of broke down uh, what longevity is, uh, what it's about uh, doing prevention for healthcare. And we talked about how the system's really kind of still messed up. Uh, it's more about treating an ailment versus trying to be preventative or catch something early uh, and kind of push towards a healthy lifestyle instead get sick, go to the doctor, here's some meds, send you home. One area that we talked about quite a bit in the show was uh, the future of drug discovery and uh, artificial intelligence and how that plays a role. And obviously, artificial intelligence has been around a long time. Uh, AI within drug discovery has actually been around for about a decade plus. You don't hear much about that, but you're hearing more and more about artificial intelligence, uh, especially with uh, chat GPT, uh, version four now that's out. Who knows, maybe we'll have 4.5 in a couple of days from now. It seems like they keep rolling out quicker and quicker. But artificial intelligence is now something that is uh, a top of mind for a lot of people, uh, specifically investors. And a lot of my subscribers and friends and family have reached out asking how I'm going to invest in artificial intelligence and how we can really profit from that in the years ahead. And I kind of smirk a little bit because I've been recommending uh, stocks that are related to artificial intelligence for quite some time. I've even recommended some stocks that are in the uh, artificial intelligence slash drug discovery niche space. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm, I'm going to talk about some numbers. And uh, it's pretty amazing when, when you look at, you know, what's going on in this uh, universe right now and really take a look at, you know, where we are with uh, the current um, path of drug discovery. You know, it depends on who you talk to, but anybody from Deloitte to McKinsey, a lot of these big firms, uh, they estimate it costs between about two. $2.5 billion to develop a new drug. And they uh, believe that artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, will not only obviously lower that cost, uh, but also um, lower the development time and increase the success rate. And keep in mind, when I say $2.5 billion, um, we, you may get three quarters of the way through that and uh, not have a drug approved by the FDA. So all that money, all that time out the window. And that's why a lot of smaller biotech companies are really like buying lottery tickets because if they hit and their drug gets approved, oftentimes the stock is up thousands of percent. If they fail, they have to keep raising money. And at some point they might go bankrupt because they just can't get a drug pass and they can't get any revenue. So if you're not making any revenue, and again, keep in mind, a lot of these small biotechs, uh, we call them junior biotechs often, 
have zero revenue. There's no money coming in because they have all of their um, eggs in one basket looking for that one big hit, that one drug that will be approved by the FDA, which hopefully reaps billions and billions of dollars. But again, if that doesn't happen, there's no revenue. Of course, they've raised money. They'll continue to raise money. And the reason people invest in them, the reason uh, investors buy their stock when it's publicly traded are in the hopes of an approval by the FDA. So putting artificial intelligence and machine learning into the process, again, lowering costs, lowering the time to approval or potential approval, I should say, and increasing the success rate at the same time. You know, there's a lot of uh, algorithms that are there run, um, you know, a computer program that goes into it, and all the data that we have already can be put into uh, these systems and through AI, artificial intelligence. Think about it, instead of actually going through and having scientists do everything, you have computers that are so powerful these days that the artificial intelligence basically tells you if this drug will be a success or not. And there will be some point, I believe, that the FDA, uh, Food and Drug Administration, which approves drugs, so at some point the FDA, in my opinion, will really rely on artificial intelligence for approvals. And then obviously the companies creating the next big drug will be using the same system, same type of system, I should say. So I, I think this is something that's inevitable. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. You know, Boston Consulting Group, they came out and they said um, last year, that AI-first drug developers have identified more, more than 150 small molecule drugs with at least 15 already in clinical trials. So this is happening. This is happening right now. So I, I, don't, I, I expect that we're going to see a lot of drugs in the next 10 plus years, and probably a majority of the very big drugs, and the drugs that go after very rare diseases, because a lot of times drug companies don't want to go after rare diseases because there's not a big addressable market. We talk about TAM a lot, total addressable market. It's a rare disease. It's not a big market because a lot of people don't have it, thankfully. So you, you have to really incentivize these biotech companies, and these drug companies to go after rare diseases because, you know, what if it's your family member that has that? And so you're going to see a lot of the, the, the AI go towards that, in, in my opinion. Um, Morgan Stanley analysts estimate that an approximate uh, 2% improvement in the pace of pre preclinical and phase one development will lead the industry to generate some 50 novel therapies in the next 10 years. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that's about five a year. That's a, that's a lot of novel therapies. This would equate to some $50 billion in net present value for the biopharma industry. Again, that's a big number, $50 billion. And one of the companies I'm going to talk about, I have four companies that I came up with that use AI and drug discovery, is uh, Schrodinger. And they, 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 according to H.C. Wainwright, which is a, a, a research firm, uh, they have uh, described a 10-month time frame to identify and develop a candidate. Well, Accentia, another company I'm, talk I'm going to talk about, they put the average time around 12 months. And again, by traditional standards for the drug discovery, to identify a development candidate, this is not get approval, development candidate, usually takes between three and five years. These two companies claim to cut it down to 10 months to 12 months. That's a big difference. No matter all the money you're paying in those extra several years, this is a game changer, folks. This means that they will be able to get more cures for diseases that don't, don't have them. This is groundbreaking, not only for the healthcare industry, but for humanity. So let's talk about the four stocks I came up with. And these aren't the end-all, be-all. I just came up with four stocks uh, that are in the industry, uh, AI drug discovery industry. Nothing here is a buy or sell recommendation, uh, so just so you know. And the first one I just mentioned is uh, Schrodinger, and the symbol is SDGR. Schrodinger is a company that I've followed for quite some time. And, you know, I had a really nice run for a while uh, through um, late or late 2020, early 2021. At that time, it, it just fell from about $115 a share. We're trading around $27 a share right now. Still a company that I keep an eye on from time to time. Uh, I just haven't been really into it like I used to in the past because uh, we actually had it recommended in a past newsletter of mine. It's got about a $1.9 billion market cap. And if we take a look at, you know, what the company does, it's obviously a uh, healthcare-based company, but it's a kind of a software first. And by that, I mean their operating systems that they create are for drug discovery. So they have sales of this software to other drug developers. And so they'll sell the software out, and a lot of times they'll get some uh, potential revenue, uh, revenue share by, by sharing that uh, program. 
They also are using their own program, a software program for drug discovery and artificial intelligence to create their own drugs. They have their own pipeline. So I like the diversification that the company has. Uh, again, a $1.9 billion company. And because of the software business, it already has sales coming in, which I really like. Last year, did about $181 million in sales. This year, looking for $239 million. And next year, up to about $321 million. So it's not cheap based on those standards. Uh, traditional standards. However, it is generating some revenue. The red flag here for me, and I talked about this last week in one of my shows, is we're looking at companies, small caps like this, especially in the biotech industry, that have what we call a path to profitability, PTP, path to profitability. Schrodinger doesn't have that right now. Even next year is expected to lose about 78 cents a share. It doesn't have that path to profitability yet. When that will come, will be likely if they get a big drug approved, obviously that's going to bring, a, bring in a windfall and that should uh, equate to some uh, bottom line uh, profitability. In the meantime, it's, it's tough to buy the stock because again, without profitability in, in the very near future, it scares me a bit. So let me here show you a chart of, of Schrodinger. And this is going back through uh, early 2020. You can see it ran up from $25 a share to $115. It's really been in downtrend since then. But let me zoom in a little bit more and we can show what's happened over the last 18 months or so. What I like is, uh, you know, the market obviously bottomed in October. This stock bottomed in early December around $16 and now we're at 26. It's been forming a nice uptrend since then. Uh, a break above 28 bucks. This thing should really run based on a pure technical level. So maybe it's cheaper down here because it was at 115. Now we're down to 27. Uh, again, my my red flag here is maybe it's, maybe it's an orange flag. My concern is, my caution flag was called that, is there's no path to profitability with it right now. Second stock we're going to take a look at is Accentia. And the symbol of that is EXAI. This is a company that um, went public here in the United States. It, it's a company that's been around a while, but went public here in the States uh, back in 2021, September of 2021. Uh, we got up as high as $30 a share that day. We're down to $5.05 today. Uh, testing the December low, which was a little bit below $5 a share. So this has not been performing too well, uh, but let's take a look at the company. Uh, it's, it's based overseas. It's engaged in the application of artificial intelligence and machine, machine learning and discovery and design of novel therapeutic compounds. So very similar to what you would think that it does. And as I mentioned, uh, public uh, in uh, September of 21, uh, the company is about a $620 million company. And again, you look at the financials. Um, last year, $33 million in sales. This year, expecting 35 Next year, 59 So nice growth, but again, not a lot in sales right now. And if we take a look at the estimates for earnings per share going forward, even looking at next year, folks, expect to lose $1.72 a share. So what's the red flag? The red flag, and this is more of a red flag, because look at a chart here, I'll show you. Uh, this has really been downtrend, but there's no path to profitability. And you can argue and say, hey, listen, Matt, uh, you know, when it comes to these types of early stage, if you will, uh, companies, you have to take a bit of a shot. And it, you can think that way, and I have nothing against it. And I have some companies in a portfolio, in my own personal portfolio, that don't have a path to profitability in the next couple of years. However, I believe in the company and, and their 10-year investments. So if you could take that mindset and, and you're okay with the above average risk, you can you can make a run at it. Uh, but you just have to be sure that you can handle that risk and not watch a stock like this day to day, week to week, month to month because it's going to drive you nuts, because this is more about what's happening long-term. The third company we're going to take a look at uh, is symbol uh, RXRX, which I think is a great symbol because it's you know, obviously RX. Um, recursion uh, Pharmaceuticals, about a $1.26 billion company. Uh, they're a clinical stage biotech company. Um, but, you know, you take a look at what they're doing, and they have a um, uh, AI drug discovery operating system uh, that's called the recursion operating system. Uh, so they use this technology to target rare disorders uh, and uh, where there's no therapies. And I talked about this a moment ago. I think really AI drug discovery comes into uh, a place where you're looking for um, drugs for very rare uh, diseases that unfortunately have no cures or treatments at this time. So again, recursion is kind of along the same line as everything else here. And you look at the financials, again, $1.26 billion company. Uh, last year, it did $39.7 million in sales. 2021, did 10, so nice growth. Year before that, it did 3.4. Next year, looking for $62.5 uh, million in sales. Uh, then we go to the bottom line estimates. Uh, you know, obviously making money. Expected to lose about a buck thirty nine this year. Uh, no estimate for next year. And again, I don't see a path to profitability right now. 
But you can be okay with a company like this, as I just mentioned, as a small portion of your portfolio. All, this goes for all three or four of these. Um, and really, the, the best play, again, this is no buy or sell recommendation. I'm telling you what to do. The best play for looking at something like this because of the high risk. If you say, Matt, you know, I'm okay putting $1,000 in one of these stocks. Again, this isn't financial advice, but this is what I would do. I would take that $1,000 and split it between the four, $250 in each. Because then you have the upside potential of one of the four hitting it. And if one of the four hits it, you're going to have a lot more than $1,000 you originally put in it. If two of them go to zero and one hits, you're still fine. But if you happen to pick one that, that doesn't hit and goes to zero, you lose it all. So you really literally lower your risk dramatically. And you really don't cap the reward that much, in my opinion. Uh, so that's a way to play this. And then the last one we're going to take a look at is uh, Relay. And the symbol is R-L-A-Y. And um, Relay Therapeutics uh, is, is a company that's about $2.14 billion. Uh, they're obviously very similar to everything we just talked about. Clinical stage, precision medicine company, um, using a drug discovery process by in, uh, including computational experimental technologies, aka AI, into their drug discovery process. Again, $2.14 billion company. Uh, last year did 1.38 million in sales. So not much this year looking for 1.97 million in sales. Again, I just told you how big it was over $2 billion company. Uh, and again, expect to lose about $3 a share this year. So no path to profitability with that one as, as well. So these aren't the most exciting looking charts, um, and maybe not the most exciting stocks to you, but I will tell you folks, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and at some point in your future, quantum computing. When they all converge into drug discovery, it's going to change the world uh, in a better way. Uh, we're going to have therapies and drugs and cures, treatments for a lot of diseases that have nothing right now and help save families, family members, friends, uh, people out there that, that need it. So this is a good thing. <clears throat> this is a real good thing to me. This is part of longevity. This will increase longevity because we have access to better drugs and hopefully not as expensive because it's not costing nearly as much to get them out there. So hopefully the drug companies don't continue to fleece us and they actually get them out there at a good price. Well, I hope this uh, was a good show uh, for you. And it was a kind of a, a tag along part two from our great interview with last Thursday with Dr. Daniel Carlsberg. And if you have not watched that, please watch that. Uh, it's amazing. We see a 3D of my actual heart, 3D heart. He breaks it down, shows the arteries in it, uh, talks about longevity and really kind of the future of uh, healthcare and medicine and what it's going to look like. And again, these are four stocks that I think are at the cutting edge, all extremely risky, not by recommendations, sharing them with you, educating you, so you can go out and do your own due diligence, do your own work on them. But again, folks, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm Matt McCall, and that was Making Money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.